Well, hi, and welcome to episode 13, Lucky 13, of Noob Eden. We're in the uh, middle of a, a little mini-series on exploration and how new players in EVE can get into exploring some of the skills they need and what are some of the options. Now, last time we were together, we looked at scanning because that's the, at the core of what you're going to have to do to be an explorer. You're going to have to do a lot of it. You want to be efficient. And today, we're going to be doing quite a bit of scanning as we head off into Nullsec to do some exploring. Now I am super pumped because I have already pre-recorded everything so I know where this episode takes us. I know the story that unfolds over the course of our little exploration journey today and that's what I love about exploring compared to something like Abyssal Space where you can make more isk per hour but it's super important not to ignore the fun per hour. Uh, I love exploring. I love the unknown. I love you know, not knowing what's around the corner, what could happen. And something like Abyssals, which are great. They make good isk and, and they're enjoyable to do. But I just don't find it as much fun as exploring. You will probably make more money running Abyssals. Uh, and other types of PvE, but exploring has something, I don't know, spiritual about it, just something that I really enjoy, the unknown, the, the story that comes from taking this little Imicus with an alpha pilot, and we're going to go and loot some of the riches of Nullsec, and see if we can find our way back home. I just love that challenge. So let's get into it. So here we are in our skills page in the scanning category, and you will see that because this character is an alpha account, uh, that there are certain limits to the things that I can train. So the white boxes represent the skills that I have trained and the little dots represent the ones that I cannot train unless I'm an, an Omega account. Now I have trained everything up to its maximum that I can for this particular alpha account in scanning. Now it doesn't take long. Uh, you can use the bonus skill points from when you sort of use the link to start the game or uh, daily alpha injectors uh, or you can train them just through the normal training queue. Now some of these skills are going to help you with the accuracy of your scanning and being able to pinpoint signatures. That would be the uh, astrometrics, uh, acquisition and range finding. The archaeology and hacking are actually going to give you a stronger uh, ability to do the hacking mini game, which once you've scanned down your signature and you find your data and relic sites, which we'll talk about in this video, it uh, helps you improve your chances of being able to be successful in hacking into those. The survey skill, not so important for what we're doing, um, but if you are going to do any serious exploring, you really should maximize all of your scanning skills as far as you can with your alpha or omega to help you succeed in this career. Now bear in mind, CCP has also recently introduced the concept of expert systems. So if you did not want to spend necessarily the time or the skill point investment to try out exploring, for like $1.99 US, you can buy or rent basically seven days worth of the skills that are required for you to be successful as an explorer without you actually having to invest those skill points directly into your character. You can purchase those through the CCP website. I am going to remove them from this character because I want to see, can we do this? Can we be successful Nullsec explorers as an alpha just using the bare bones basic material and the bare bones basic alpha skills. Let's find out. Okay, let's talk about the fit for our little Imicus. You'll see if I search for Imicus in the fittings, there's a Tech 1 exploration fit. Now we're going to use this mostly, we're gonna make a, a couple of variations to it. In the bottom, in the lows here, you'll see a repairer and a power diagnostic system. There are some uh, hobgoblin ones in the drone bay and a spare set of eight probe so eight in will go in the launcher that will leave us eight spare so 16 in total to have a spare set now if i exit the simulation for that fit i'll get my actual fit and everything is the same except the lows here i have replaced the repairer and the power system with two warp core stabilizer ones now these will help us to prevent being warp scrammed and in fact because i know where this story goes we are going to need these these are going to come in real handy so you'll see why we fit them shortly now because i am disorganized you will see that uh my hold does not have the spare set of eight probes so let's buy some because this is also a good opportunity to teach you a little bit about market and purchasing in Jita. So I am going to buy some core probe, some core scanner probe ones. 
There you go, Korg Scanner Probe 1. Now when I click on this, I can see that there's a whole heap of them listed here in station. Now I can sort these columns by clicking in the heading and you'll see the disclosure triangles or the sort triangle goes up or down. Now if I sort by jumps, that shows me everything in station, but look at those prices. They're not in order, so I may actually be paying too much. So I want to sort my prices by order. Now, not from dearest down, but in fact, if I click again on the, because uh, I don't want to pay 12 million, if I click again on the heading, I'm now sorting by price. So I'm going to come down to the cheapest one that is in this station. That's how I'll do my buying so that I don't end up paying too much. I want eight of these, so let's buy them. And you'll see they pop up in our items hanger, in our inventory. Don't forget to put them into your cargo hold. I can click and drag from the item hanger straight onto my cargo hold in the fitting window. And now I've got my spare set of eight probes ready to go. So let's take a look at what's actually on the fit. In my rigs, I have some small gravity capacitor upgrades. They will help improve the scanning strength of my probes. In the highs, I have my core probe launcher one, very basic, loaded with the core scanner probe ones. Once again, very basic material, very alpha and nubro friendly and very cheap. And this fit also comes with a salvager, which I'm probably not going to use. Now, if you are an Omega character, you should replace that with some kind of a cloak. Alpha characters cannot use cloaks. We also have a data analyzer one, which we'll use to access the data sites. We have a Relic Analyzer 1 to access the hacking game for the Relic sites. We have a, a, a Type-E Enduring co a Cargo Scanner. This will allow us to have a quick look what's in a container before we hack it to see if there's value and a micro warp drive for zipping around between containers. Some damage tank in the lows and of course the warp core stabilizers that we've already mentioned. And that's about it. It's very inexpensive, coming in at about 1.6 million isk for the entire thing. Uh, exactly what we want to go and learn in, make some mistakes in, possibly die in, and uh, have a heck of a lot of fun in, and see if we can make some profit. And speaking of dying, that's quite possibly something we'll do. So a few things to, uh, to consider before we leave. Let's go to our character augmentations tab and make sure we don't have any implants in now we haven't discussed them in the channel but if you are using implants take them out because if we get uh, potted or if our capsule dies in null sec we don't want to lose those so make sure your head is empty and lastly we want to make sure we have set our home station back at home so if i go to the top left corner right click on the current location set home station now for me i'll get this error that says you can't do this you've already set it that's because jita currently is my home station but make sure you set that so that if we die and get potted our clone will jump back to where we want to be not somewhere in the middle of nowhere okay noob so you said we are going exploring in nullsec but how do we get there we are going to what we call yeet we are going to buy some filaments and the colloquial term is yeeting, and they're a filament that just basically shoots us out into um, null sec. That's a heck of a lot of filaments, so let's just get straight into the ones we want so that we can get out into space. Okay, it is the Noise 5 Needle Jack Filament. Now, the Noise Filament will take us out into null sec. Uh, so does the signal filament, but it'll take us to a busier place. We want somewhere quiet, we're exploring, we want space to ourselves. The noise 5 or 15 or 25 refers to the number of pilots that that filament will take when we use the filament. So because we're on our own, the smallest we can get is the 5 pilot one. We can go as one, that's okay. So we'll see there are about 120,000 isk. I'm going to buy about 5 of those. We may use a couple on our trip. Now we are going to be coming home hopefully in one piece we're going to use wormholes but just as an aside you can buy filaments such as this one here the home five potchvin filament which will yeet you from known space into triglavian space and from there you can get another filament that brings you from triglavian to high sex space now we're not going to do that because it's about five million to get back and we're trying to do this on the cheap but bear in mind they're available are uh, the ones that would get you out of potchvin are the 
proximity extraction filament and you can see there like almost four and a half million so we're not going to do that but bear in mind that's an option if you don't want to come home through wormholes but who wouldn't it's kind of fun so in our cargo hold we've got our spare scanner probes we've got our five noise five needle jack filaments we've got our ship fit my gosh finally let's undock and go do this thing I have warped out to a safe spot here in Jita and opened up my cargo hold, right click on the filament and click use the noise 5 needle jack. Now we're going to get an error, well not yet, we will in a minute. Let's uh, hit the activate button and it tells me that I must be in a fleet to activate a filament. How the heck do I get into a fleet? Right, probably the easiest way is to find your name in local right click on your name and you'll have the option to form fleet with and when you do that you'll see a fleet window opens up we can close that we don't need that bit we do have a fleet chat as well as our local chat we now have a fleet chat and i'm the only one in it so let's try activating the filament now when i hit activate i get another error my safety is enabled it's something that stops me doing silly things in high sec I need to set that to partial or total disabled. So this uh, little dot here to the top left corner of my capacitor wheel. I've got options for partial safety, which is the one I want. Click and confirm our decision. And now let's try one more time to activate this filament. And this time all looks good. We are now jumping from Jita into a random null sec system. We're being yeeted right now. And here we are, having arrived in the null sec system of BTAC G1LG. I've selected my local chat tab to see who else is in the system, and it's just me. This is perfect for what we want to do. Now, before we do anything else, I'm just going to check my overview settings because I think I've been mucking around with them. I want on my general tab to see the sun. That's good. I also want to make sure I can see scanner probes. So I'm going to check for probes and yes i have been mucking around with it so make sure that is checked so when you do your descan, you can see if anyone is combat scanning you down with combat probes and all my ships i want to make sure are added as well and of course don't forget to save and overwrite your overview setting for that particular preset now my number one task is to warp towards the sun at 100 and set a bookmark i want to make a safe spot here in this system I'm going to set it to never expire because if I ever end up back in this system, I just could have my bookmark here. Uh, we've done this in previous video. We're going to drop the bookmark as well on the fly and they're going to warp straight back to it. Let's do that to save a bit of time. So here we are at our bookmark. Hey, if you don't know what just happened, go back and check some previous episodes about habits and setting bookmarks. So where the heck are we? Well, Dorothy, we are not in Kansas anymore. Call up uh, our map using F10 and we can see we are somewhere down here in the region of Stain. In fact, we are a long way from home. If I was to scroll up to see where my home station is, you'll see that we've come a long way across the map, but that's great. That's what exploring is all about. But in the bad news department, you will see our probe scanner in the bottom leftish corner shows there are no cosmic signatures in this system. So what are our options? Well, part of me thinks, well, let's just yeet again to another null sec system. Let's see what happens when we try that, though. If I right click, use the filament, I don't have the option to activate. That's because I have a 15 minute timer. I cannot reactivate a filament until 15 minutes has passed from the previous activation uh, before we can use them again. So we're here for a while. Let's check out the solar system map F10 for the local systems. I'm going to filter to show ships destroyed in the last hour. And as I hover over each of the systems, I can see there hasn't been any destruction. This looks good. This indicates probably no bubbles uh, or gate camps to cause me drama. I'm going to set a destination up to the top right here because I want to go and visit a few systems for signatures, but I want to visit these two. So I'm going to add a waypoint down the bottom here so that my route now includes well it was meant to include both of them to fix this if i go up to the left of my screen where i've got this little a for my route and click on it 
I click optimize route, you'll see now it does run through. So if you've selected a number of waypoints, always good to optimize your route uh, to make sure it's being as efficient as you can be. So let's go and check out the first system on our route, see if we can find ourselves some cosmic signatures. Here we are next door, having set up my safe spot, and I'm going to actually now scan down. There is a single cosmic signature in this system. For our scanning video, see the previous episode, episode 12. I'm not going to go through it all again, but uh, let's see if we can find what this cosmic signature is. Now, bear in mind, as I have a look at the local chat over on the left of the screen, I can see I'm not alone in this system. There is another pilot in here, so I do want to be watching D-Scan. Uh, to see if anything shows up that might alert me to any potential danger or if any combat scanner probes show up. Now, oh, you'll see I've got the core scanner probes in the top right corner there, but they're mine. It's the combat scanner probes we uh, want to be aware of. Uh, let's get this scanned down and see what it is. Well, that's no good to us. It's a combat site. We are not fit for that. So we shall move along to the next system and see what we can find there. Okay, this is perfect. We've got two cosmic signatures in system and I can see that I'm alone there is no one else in local so I've got some peace in here to go ahead and scan down these signatures now unfortunately the first one turns out to be a wormhole not what I'm after at the moment I'm looking for data sites or relic sites so if I right click I can ignore that result knowing that I can get it out of the way it's not going to clog up my list let's check the next one and this is great. We've got ourselves a data site. This is what we're looking for so that we can do the hacking mini game to try and access the loot that's in the containers in this site. Right, we've scanned it down to a point where we can now warp to it. We've got 100% on the signature and let's go and see if we can hack this site. Once again, it's good news. There's no one else in local. It's just... Uh, just me at the moment so I can take my time knowing that no one is going to pop up beside me and surprise me. So each of the sites contain a number of containers that we need to hack into before we can access their loot. I'm going to orbit this Sansha mainframe, which is one of uh, what five containers in this site. I cannot activate my data analyzer because this is a data site. I'll be using the data analyzer until I'm within 5,000 meters. So I'm going to orbit it two and a half thousand. As soon as I get within 5,000, I'm going to lock it up activate my data analyzer module and the hacking game will begin. Now you can find one hour tutorials on YouTube of the hacking game and how to maximize it. I'm going to try and give you the new beta, new bro, what do you need to know kind of version and hopefully that'll be enough to get you going most of the sites. First thing we need to know is it's a uh, it's like a turn-based strategy mini game. We have a virus in the bottom left corner here of our hacking screen. This is our virus and we're going to challenge it, put it up against other viruses uh, and firewalls that we come across in the hacking game. What are these numbers? The top number here is our coherence. It's the health of our virus and the bottom number, the 25 in this case, is the strength. So on a turn, when we attack, we do 25 damage. The opposing virus or firewall will attack back and knock down our coherence from 70 down depending on the strength of the other virus. There are a number of other things along the way, but that's essentially it. And if we can get to what we call the system core, which is the final thing we need to uh, attack, we crack the container open and take the loot. So let's just play this one and we'll pause it and chat as we go through. Right, those first two open nodes, as I clicked on them, you would see numbers. The numbers represent how many nodes you are away from something good. So the first one showed two, then a one. I was moving towards something positive, hopefully. And here's our first positive thing, because mixed in amongst the difficult things or the negatives we're going to have to fight are some tools to help us. This is a utility subsystem. It's called a polymorphic shield. It's going to protect our virus for the next two attacks when we fight against another virus. Now you can see at the bottom of our hacking screen are three slots where I can store subsystems that I come across. So I'm going to click on this, put it aside because I don't want to use it until I'm ready to use it. Right, here's the first 
uh, challenge that we've hit. We've hit a firewall. It has a coherence of 80 and a strength of 20. Now we're not going to fight it straight away because I've got other nodes that are open that I could select. I don't want to waste my coherence on this just yet. So let's continue to see if we can unlock some other nodes. Right, here we go with another firewall, but I'm not going to attack it yet because I've still got some other nodes open that I could investigate for. Alright, not going too well. This time we've uncovered an antivirus. It has a lower coherence, but a higher strength. We're getting close to going to have to fight some of these because I don't have many more options. You'll see now I've hit three fives in a row up in this top left corner. There's no point exploring further into the corner because I'm five, at least five steps away from anything good. So I can, I can stop wasting time heading towards that corner. We're going to have to try and hit one of these subsystems. So before attacking this defensive subsystem, I'm going to click on my polymorphic shield that I put aside earlier. And you can see that on my first attack, I've taken 25 off its coherence. That's because my virus has a strength of 25. Now you'll see that I got another attack on this one without taking any damage because my uh, utility subsystem uh, gave me two protected attacks without taking any damage. Now I've got it down to five coherence. Uh, but now, because my subsystem has been used up, I take my first damage. And you'll see I've dropped 20 on my coherence, because that virus I attacked has a strength of 20. Now, the big picture here is I should be right now, because it's down to 5 coherence. I have a strength of 25. On the next hit, because I go first, I will defeat that uh, subsystem without taking any damage. And that's exactly what happened, and we can now proceed looking for the system core. Now this, however, is a problem that does need to be dealt with straight away. I cannot ignore this restoration node, because if I do, for every time I press a node, it will restore or it will make stronger the other defensive subsystems. So we need to get rid of that and fight it straight away. Now we managed to defeat it, but things don't look good. I only have 20 health or 20 coherence left, and that's going to be quite a struggle to try and successfully hack this one. I'm probably going to fail it. Let's go through and see what happens. Well, that helps, but it may be too little too late. I'm going to put this aside in my storage area anyway. It's what we call a kernel rot, and it will take 50% coherence off the uh, defensive subsystem when I use it. Okay, now I have these two brightly lit nodes. Uh, I don't know what they are. They could be good or they could be bad. They're what we call a data cache. Tend to leave them and not use them unless you don't have another option. They may be good or they may be bad. So I'll push on at the moment with the uh, open nodes that I do have. Yeah, things are not looking good in this case. Uh, I'm going to try working my way through. Now I'm going to be forced to use my data cache here. This turns out to be a positive one. It's what we call a self-repair and you should activate it straight away. It increases your coherence for the next three turns. And things are not looking good here. Another restoration node. That uh, data cache was negative. We're really struggling. I don't think there's much chance we'll have a successful hack here. And you'll see it in that uh, instant that we failed. Well, in most sites, you have two opportunities. Uh, if you fail the second time, the container will explode and you can no longer try and loot it. So we're going to go again on this one. Now, I'm just going to let a couple of these hacking games run, maybe comment if I need to. Um, but there are a couple of tips and tricks, just generally. First of all, usually the system core, which is the, the last virus we're looking for, is kind of in the opposite corner from where you start, which is great if you start in a corner, but if you start in the middle somewhere or the, uh, yeah, the top middle, that doesn't help you so much. But as a guide, you want to work towards the opposite diagonal from where you start, generally. Now, there is a thing called the rule of sixes. And the rule of sixes says this, anywhere where you see like this here, where you've got a node that is surrounded by six other nodes, that central node should be safe. 
it should not have a defensive subsystem. If for some reason it does have a defensive subsystem, then the system core will be on one of the six surrounding that defensive subsystem. So part of your strategy may be to look for these clumps of six, try to make a pathway that works through them, uh, either giving you safe passage or alerting you to the fact that the system core will be uh, there if you hit upon a negative subsystem. All right, now I jumped ahead in this one because we actually found the system core. However, don't get too excited because having a look at this, there's a big problem. Uh, I don't really have enough coherence left to attack this. I only have 14 coherence left. In two attacks, I will lose 20 because the system core has a strength of 10, but I will only give 50 damage. I'm going to fail this one, but at least we know what a system core looks like. And at this point, you might be starting to think this isn't possible, but hang in there. We may be uh, lucky in an upcoming container. Now, because we failed our second hacking attempt on this container, it destroys itself. It blows up, no longer available to us. However, in more important news, in all the time, I forgot to notice that someone else has turned up in local. I'm no longer alone in this system. In fact, on my D scan, the top right corner, I can see there is an Astero uh, somewhere on my D scan. So we have a bit of a problem now. My expectation is that this guy will come in and try to kill me reasonably confident because I have uh, my two warp core stabilizers. So if he turns up and tries to warp scram me and it's just the one Astero, I should be able to slip out from under his scram. So in this case, I make the decision to continue uh, trying to hack into these containers, keeping a, an eye on my overview so that if he shows up, I'm going to instantly bail. It's a little bit of a ballsy move. I could move on to another system, but look, I don't have much to lose at this point. We haven't actually collected any loot. I've got a million and a half ship. Why not uh, take, a, take a chance? All right, five minutes have passed and no sign of the Astero. And I finally had a, uh, a successful hack. And so now at this point, once I successfully hacked the container, I want to uh, loot it. So I want to open the cargo container. I need to be within two and a half thousand meters. And when I do that, I'll get this little inventory window. I can hit loot all. And we took, I don't know, it was about half a million or something out of that. Not a lot, but let's keep going. Once again, keeping an eye out for this Astero. All right, it's been about seven minutes since I first noticed the other guy in local. Been uh, keeping an eye whilst I've been hacking, watching my overview, because if he shows up on grid, I want to bail now. In the bottom left corner, you'll see I have my saved locations window open. We've talked about this in a previous video. It gives me my bookmarks in system, which I can use the radial menu to quickly get to and you'll see when I unfreeze this that's exactly the process I follow as I uh, as the Estero drops on grid mid hack and there he is now it takes me a few seconds to realize he locks me up but because I've got my bookmark easy to access I can instantly go over right click warp to my safe and even though I'm starting to take some damage now and I am actually scrammed because of my two uh, warp disruptor modules. I'm able to moonwalk out of there without actually dying. So yeah, well done. That was exciting. Now, despite the non-consensual nature of that PVP, I incur another cooldown timer, meaning I can't just use another filament and yeet off to another nullsec location. So I bounced around a couple of the nearby systems and found another data site. And uh, once again, just keeping an eye on local, which is empty at this point, so nice. And I managed finally to get a nice successful hack. Had a few fails and we're starting to think maybe this is not possible. But as you can see in this case, not only is it possible, but out of this container, we actually get a decent amount of loot. In fact, we get almost 3 million from that container. So yeah, it's actually doable and uh, quite possible for a alpha with the bare bones basic equipment to do some successful nullsec exploration and hacking. Now I'm going to yeet to another nullsec system because there's a bit of heat here. They know I'm around. Uh, so let's yeet off somewhere else and see if we have any more success. All right, now we've yeeted off to a completely different region. We are now in uh, impasse, have scanned down 
a uh, two data sites in this particular system and are working our way through the hacking game let's see how we go with this particular successful hack what's the loot like out of this container nice almost two million out of that one and so now we're just going to work our way through i think i've got the system to myself i can take my time and work through uh my my uh my data sites through all the containers and let's see what we end up with at the end of it all Right, after going through those uh, containers, we come up with around about uh, a bit over 16 million, so not a bad haul, and we had a lot of fun. The problem now is we need to get home. So let's talk about how we're going to get back to Jeter with all of our loot. And the answer to that question is wormholes. I'm going to go to the agency, the exploration tab, cosmic signatures, because I'm looking for a system nearby that has a lot of cosmic signatures, because I'm looking for a wormhole to start my track home. I can see 6ETAC uh, nearby has 11 signatures. So we are going to set destination to there. Or in fact, in this case, we're going to jump through the Stargate. And uh, we're going to scan our way through those signatures, because I'm looking for... A wormhole and when we get into it we'll talk a bit more about what we in particular are looking for to get us home right, it turns out that 6e tac is a very busy system a lot of signatures but a lot of people i found a wormhole i'm not going to look for heaps of them once i've found one i'm going to jump into it i want to get somewhere quiet and what i'm looking for is a wormhole that has a connection to a high sec so a wormhole exit that will take me off into high sec because from there i can travel back to jita so i'm going to jump into this wormhole and uh we'll talk about some tactics once we get in it all right we've arrived at our wormhole i'm going to get some information about this wormhole and it says well, this one leads me into dangerous unknown parts of space this is going to be in a fairly high class uh wormhole now we'll talk more about wormholes i guess in a future video but a couple of basic tips for the moment once you go into a wormhole the very 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 first thing you do every time is you make a bookmark uh, so that you can come back to that now we could scan it down again but it would be a pain so i'm going to create a bookmark that in this case i'm going to give it a name that means something to me uh, my exit to null for example and I'm going to save that bookmark. And uh, just like we've done previously, I'm going to make a safe spot in this system, just like we were doing when we were doing our exploring and looking for our data sites. Because uh, so, now I want to scan these cosmic signatures that are in this wormhole uh, to look for a way out of here. All right, so we're pulling up at our safe spot. And uh, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to do a search on Google uh, on the name of this wormhole because I'm looking for some information that tells me whether or not this wormhole has an exit to high sick. Now, if I look at the name of this wormhole in the top left corner of the screen, I can see that it's J103959. I'm going to take that name and I'm going to type it into Google. And when I do that, the first search result I get is the Alatha uh, Wormhole Systems Database. If I click on the link for this particular wormhole, I can see that it's a class 5 wormhole and it has a static of a Y790 plus a lot of list of all these other things. I'm going to click on that Y790 and it tells me that that wormhole will take me into a class 1 wormhole. So somewhere in this wormhole is a link to another wormhole that will take me to another wormhole if that makes sense but what i'm looking for is a link a, a wormhole into high sec so let's scan down uh any wormhole signatures to get me out of this one because i might have to do two or three before i can find what i'm looking for right i managed to scan down three wormholes that lead out of this particular wormhole i'm going to go to one of them and i'm going to look at the information and it will give me some information about where that links to in this case uh the information for this wormhole oh perfect it says it leads into high security space ladies and gentlemen i think we found a way home to a jita so i'm going to go through this wormhole and once again i'm going to get to the other side i'm instantly going to bookmark and when we get out i'm going to cross my fingers and hope that it actually spits us out pretty close to jita let's find out all right so i'm instantly going to make my bookmark uh to this wormhole in case i do want to come back into it and i'm going to use my personal assets some, a tip we've shown you in previous videos uh and, well in fact in this case i can see jita is oh my gosh it's 42 
jumps away. Now, if I right click and set destination, I can see the route that will take me from here, Airshaz to Jita. Now there are some settings. I've got that set on prefer safer, but if I change that to prefer shorter, it will take me through low sec and potentially through null sec. But as I scroll across these uh, waypoints or these markers, I can see it's going to take me through low sec. So I won't need to worry about any bubbles, just gate camps if I want to get this down to 25 jumps. Now part of me uh, actually wants to go back into the wormhole and check out the other ones and see if I can get something closer. In fact, let's do that and if it doesn't work, we'll come out this way. I'm not entirely keen on doing 42 or even 25 jumps. If I can avoid the low sec, I'm going to check out one of the other wormholes that were in that uh, series of three that we scanned down. And as I get the information on it, by the way, love all the scars from my fight with the Estero. Now this one says it leads into unknown parts of space. So it's another wormhole. It's a lower class wormhole. But I am going to go through. I'm going to poke my nose through and just happen to see if that next wormhole has a high sec link. So we're going to go through this wormhole. We're going to scan down uh, any wormhole signatures in there and to see if we manage to snag something that's a little bit closer to home. I'm going to bookmark this instantly. I go through. I'm going to actually call this one uh, HS plus one. Just letting me know I'm one jump or one wormhole away from my previous high sec link. You come up with a system that works for you. But let's see if we've got any wormholes here that will take us into high sec. Now, as before, I put the name of this system into the uh, Alatha database, and I can see that this wormhole also has a high set connection. So one of the wormholes, one of the static wormholes in this wormhole will always take me into high sec and N110. So I'm going to see if I can scan that one down and see if it pops me out closer to home. Well, that sucks. I found the wormhole, jumped through it, and it's 50 jumps to uh, Jita. So no closer at all. I'm giving up. I'm going to go back to my original one that took me something like 25 jumps, although it took me through low sec, but I'm going to do a gate check before we go. All right, we're back in Air Shaz. That was our original high sec connection. 25 jumps, but it's going to take me through some low sec systems. So I'm going to go to a website in my browser called Eve Gate Check. If you just Google uh, Eve Gate Check, uh, what's it called? Gate, Eve dash gate check space, something like that. We're going to put in our start and end locations. In this case, I'm traveling from Airshaz to Jita. So if I type in Airshaz to Jita, preferring the shortest route, uh, check it for me, please. And it's going to give me a list of kills at gates between Airshaz and Jita. Now I can see three of these gates have had uh, sort of some kills in the last hour. Now there's nothing on here that actually jumps out as a problem for me. Even though this one here, number eight on the list, uh, Camilla, if I'm going to pause here, we'll just talk about this. So here's why I'm not too worried about that particular gate, because I can see it says three kills at the Ohide gate. Now we're not going through that. If I look, Chunka is the gate before Camilla. So coming into Camilla, I'll be going from the Chunka gate so into Camilla. That's not where the three kills occurred. So I'm pretty comfortable with that one. Looking down at number 13, uh, I could, uh, let's see that one there, one kill. That's not a big deal. Hictors, what I could do is I can actually look at the Z kill board link. We'll probably talk Z kill board in another future video, but I can have a look at that kill that occurred in the last hour. And uh, if I click on that link, I can see that's not actually a, a gate camp, a, um, uh, look, a gank fleet. It was looks like it was a legit actual fight. So that's just some things you pick up through experience. But if I look at that, I could see looking at those ships, that's not a typical gate camp, nor is it a typical victim of a gate camp. So I'm pretty relaxed about that one. And as it turns out, my assessment was pretty accurate. We got home in one piece. Now, I say one piece, a few scratches from our awesome little experience with the Estero. That's part of the excitement of what we just did. Think about what we just did. We took our little bare bones budget, one and a half million Imicus. We went out, we yeeted out to Nullsec. We looted some of the uh, 16 millions worth of goods out there. And then we wormholed our way back uh, very covertly back home with our stuff to sell. I'm going to pull it up here. They've got more to talk about, but we'll do that in, I guess, will be a third episode. But guys, I hope that has given you a heap of tips and ideas 
uh, and suggestions for uh, going out and exploring as a new player, the things you can do, the things to avoid, uh, the excitement, the stories that you bring home from your epic adventures. Look forward to hearing from some of them in the comments. You guys are amazing. Good job. Well done.